Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Warm wishes to y'all wherever you're watching from. If you're watching here in Florida, there's about a 45% chance that you pay your electricity bill through Florida Power and Light, which happens to be the largest utility here in the state of Florida. And we expect by 2030, about 3 million new residents are going to move into the state. So these new residents, as well as the current residents living here in Florida, are going to exert a greater demand on our electricity grid. So among renewable energy resources, we see in figure one that solar is best positioned to meet these growing energy demands. And in figure two, we see that Florida Power and Light is the most aggressive among investor-owned utilities in sourcing their electricity from solar. So therefore, we have to investigate that Florida Power and Light is interested in applying the silver mechanism. And the silver mechanism is allowed by the Florida Public Service Commission, which is a public governing body here in Tallahassee, that allows and regulates the electricity rates that you and I pay to all these investor-owned utilities. And it allows FPL and other utilities to recover the costs associated with these solar projects and raise the base rates that you and I pay. So we have to investigate what are the economic prospects for FPL when they install these solar projects, as well as investigating if these base rate increases are necessary to maintain their legislated profitability. So therefore, we can investigate current market and technological conditions as they relate to the generation of electricity, which relates to the revenue that, that that would represent for FPL, as well as the cost to maintain and operate and install all these solar projects in the state. So we were able to conduct a sensitivity analysis, which combines about 110,000 different scenarios and combinations of the generation and cost parameters. And we found that only 2.5% of scenarios were found to have any sort of positive profit. But if we expanded the time frame, which is one of our generation parameters to consider 30 year time periods, which is the average length of a solar project, we find that only about 20% of scenarios are profitable under, under that condition. Now we have to remember that the Florida Public Service Commission allows utilities such as FPL to have a regulated rate of return range and FPLs is between six and 7%. And unfortunately, less than 1% of scenarios are within this 6 to 7%. So what does this mean on a technological perspective? Well, if we look at figure four, this relates the profit on the z-axis, as well as other three generation parameters of insulation, which represents the amount of sunlight hitting an area of land, module efficiency, which represents the efficiency with which the modules convert the sunlight into electricity, as well as the time period. So if we start with a low module efficiency on the left part of the graph, it's quite faint on your screen, but you can see if we had a low module efficiency and high insulation, as well as a long time period, we have very few scenarios where we have any profitability and those that are profitable are relatively low. But if we move from on the module efficiency axis from left to right, we begin to see there are more combination of scenarios that are more profitable and the amount of profitability is greater. So therefore, if we move from left to right all the way to the right on your module efficiency, we find that there are a lot more profitable scenarios and you begin to see that you can have uh, reach profitability at a lower time frame. So in conclusion, what does this mean from a technological and policy perspective? Well, again, it's reasonable pr to predict that FPL can yield an economic profit. We saw 20% of scenarios in 30 year time frames are profitable. But again, that means 80% are not profitable in those scenarios. And so we saw it again in visually in figure four. If one of the three revenue parameters are low, which in that case, as I explained, is module efficiency, we needed the other two generation parameters of insulation and the time period to be relatively high. And finally, we saw from a public policy perspective, FPL is allowed by the Florida Public Service Commission to have a rate of return between six and 7%. And we saw less than 1% of scenarios meet this criterion. So therefore, when FPL submits their sober mechanism to recover base rates and charge increase these rates to consumers like yourself and me who live in Florida, these, this is a valid uh, thing that the FPSC can enable. I do wanna thank the DeVoe Moore Center, Dr. Crystal Taylor, Dr. Sam Staley, and Amber Hedquist for all their help in, in this research and developing the poster. Thank you to the CRE for allowing us to present electronically. I'd be glad to answer any questions y'all might have uh, after this presentation and in the future. And well wishes to everyone wherever you're watching. Thank you.